Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord again this morning. We can stop thanking him as long as we live, as long as we have our breath in our life. It's a beautiful day out here in um, in London. And I thank the grace of the Lord. I know for those of us down, down, down east, they've had their morning. It's now afternoon. For those of us in Australia watching, in New Zealand watching, we give the Lord praise. You've enjoyed the day a while. For those of us in India, you've enjoyed the day a while. For those of us in South Africa, you've enjoyed the day for a few hours. And for us now, here we are. And for those of us in the United States, we want to thank the Lord especially for you, brethren, who wake up very early, 4 a.m., 5 a.m., your time to be on the line, to keep watching our Father, who is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him, will reward everyone. And as many of us that are spreading all this good news to the uttermost part of the world, to everyone, says, send the gospel to everyone until as uh, Yeshua commanded, even unto the end of the world, amen, he will be with us. May you be highly blessed. May you, be, you don't know who you're touching through spreading this good news. It may be someone you don't know. It may be someone at the end of the line. It may be someone that's prayed for years, asking the Lord, what has happened to the truth? And because you're sending it, don't worry if you don't know them. You don't have to know them. But on the last day, I bet you, they will come to you and say, thank you so much. I don't know you. But you shared a message that touched my life. You shared a message and somebody shared it and somebody gave it to me and somebody, and maybe I watched it in somebody's house and that was how my life was transformed. May the Lord bless all of us who are in these last days helping to make sure that truth is once more spread across the whole earth. Father, we thank you for all of us. Thank you for your children who are watching and those who will watch later and those who will get these Lord videos or the audios everlasting father may your word open our hearts may your word enlarge it may your word enlighten us may your word be rich in us to your own glory Lord we are waiting we said this morning speak for thy servant hear it in Yeshua Jesus name we pray amen and amen Hallelujah. We've been enjoying ourselves looking at the profiles and looking at those that the Lord used, Elohim used, to usher in our Messiah. We are looking at their lives, what it's all about. Why did he choose this group of people to do it? You know, when you're doing your wedding, you, you choose your best man, you choose your um, your um, chief bridesmaid, you choose, you choose the... For you to choose them, there's a reason. You don't just get them in. It's either they are your relatives or they are your best of friends or they are the ones you choose them in. When some people are put in political offices, brethren, especially all the presidents and all the prime ministers of our time, what do they do? Do they just get anyone, keep going? No, they choose their cabinet. There's a reason why they're choosing their cabinet. They choose, if they're choosing the S checkers or the accountant general or whatever you call it in your country, they are choosing them because they know that this one can deliver. If they're going to choose the chief of staff who will be in charge of security, they don't just choose anyone. Of course, they can't choose anyone like me who have no clue about what military is all about. Although some people will, due to political reasons, do it and their country will suffer for that time. But brethren, what we're saying is that there are reasons why they choose their cabinet. They get them in. It's either they're in the same party with them or because they worked hard for the political during the campaign or, or whatsoever or they think this person can deliver. They all have their agendas. They want what is. So brethren, we can go on and on and on to talk about the qualities. So if we, being human, could do this, there are still things that the Lord is using in them he uses. And the essence of all these things is not just for head knowledge or for us to tell stories. It's for us to say, Lord, now I can see those you use to do great things here on earth. And brethren, time will fail us if we start from number one. 
to think about, you know, those the Lord called and used, starting from the time of Enoch, who was not from, for God took him. He was then, it was then we realized straight down in the New Testament, he was a righteous man. He was a righteous man. And from there, look at the time of Abraham to his children and down to all the prophets. It will open your eyes that Elohim don't just choose anyone. Not just anyone. In our own eyes, the people may be weak and frail. In our own eyes, the people may not be educated. But he that created me and created you knows who you are and who everyone is. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. So you are going to now say, Lord, as I want to be used by you, let me take time. He's a perfect Elohim. He's excellent. He goes for excellency, brethren. He's, he's a God of strength. He goes for that. He's, he's a God of boldness. He goes for those who are bold. Although they may think, like Gideon thought he wasn't bold. Moses thought he is a stammerer. He couldn't speak. But the Elohim that created him knows that this is the only one who can stand. And who can stand in front of Abraham of Pharaoh to talk to him. Remember, when the Lord is putting us through things, don't discount them. You know, don't put it aside or say it doesn't matter whether it's your education, whether it's your talent, whatever the Lord has put in you. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Revelation, that we are created for his own good pleasure. You and I are created for his own good pleasure. But do you discover why he created you and walk in his purpose? Because there's a reason. If the Lord has taken you through, maybe before you got born again, you were out there in prostitution, you were out there, you know, in harlot from one place to the other, and now you are born again. What did the Lord want you to do, brethren? The Lord didn't say that you should then come to the pulpit and stand there, and the, the Lord will expect you to go back to all the brothels of your life, and then through the lifeline, and deliver as many, because you know the language, you know the lifestyle, you know where to find them, you know what they are going through, you know the kind of emotional and then disaster they're going in, into the psychological mayhem they are in. You have the right word. You can speak to them. And that's why the Lord has saved you. But today, everybody wants to come together and gather in the church. And everybody is just, you know, a kind of squabble for pulpit, which ought not to be so. There are reasons why the Lord has called us. And you there and you're a pilot and the Lord has delivered you and you are now born again. What did the Lord expect you to do? There are people out there who are up there flying 30,000, 32,000 feet above sea level. Miles. They take on a journey. They don't know if they are coming back. Again, the Lord will expect you to go back to that field and speak to them. You were a drunk before you get born again. And now the Lord has cleansed you. What were you expected to do? What is he expecting you to do? He had equipped you right now to go back to tell the people and say to them, look, look, you know where to find them. You have the right word. You know how you felt, how you were. It will resonate with them when you go. And brethren, when the Lord is taking us through every space of our life, I want you to know there is a reason. In our state right now, what the Lord demands and wants for us is consecration, brethren, commitment. We also, the, 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 we just, we're just finishing the, the fundamentals to seize. And I know that all of us that listened to those messages, pick them up again and then put them in your heart and then read them again. These are the qualities of those that the Lord uses. And I hope the Lord will open our eyes. And you're, where you are now, you are going to say, Lord, use me. Lord, whatever it will take, use me. Lord, look into my heart, look into my mind, look into my life. All it will take, Lord, get me in the position where you brought all these people that you used to ushering yourself into this earth ring. So today we are Going to, we talked about Zechariah just in the past and yesterday. Today we're going to look at the life of Zechariah and look at the life of Elizabeth and then look at the life of Joseph, Mary's husband. Let's start. Luke chapter 1. Let's start reading from verse, um, let's read it from verse 1. 
For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are mostly surely, surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seems good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all these, all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was a man in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. There was a man that, in the, sorry, it says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they both were righteous before God walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Wonderful. You know, we talked about, you know, what, what honor do you want? What title do you want? You know, when people chase title, when people are after this and that and that, you know, you know, when you go there on Facebook, you see people calling themselves bishop, prophet, doctor, this and that. Brethren, what's going on? What's going on? And you take all those things to give to yourself. You don't know the scriptures. Because the Bible says that the one, the servant that knows the will of his master and doeth it not, shall be beaten with many stripes. So if you're going for many, are you able to fulfill that bishop, prophet, evangelist, doctor? What are you doing with them? You know, when I see those things, I, I say they don't know what they are in. Because it's not about the title. But look at the title given to these. And I know you want these. This is what you want in front of your name. This is what you want to be, you know, people to say about you when they are talking in the church or out there in your workplaces, in the offices, in your neighborhood. You want, I want, there it says, and it says, and they both were, and they were both righteous before God. Am I righteous before him? Are you righteous before him? right standing with him the one who can be able to stand you know psalm 24 from verse 1 and verse and verse 15 it, and, and psalm 15 verse 20, psalm 24 and psalm 15 the bible says who is that man that will be able to stand before elohim who is that person the one that has clean hands the ones that you can't see anything unclean in them. Let's see these qualities. Brethren, let's see the book of Psalm, chapter 24, and then read it. Let's start with 15 and then 24. Psalm 15, verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? This is Zechariah and then Elizabeth, the priest. Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? This is the two. At the time that Yeshua was born. So for me, a minister, for you who, I, who is a minister, or for those of us, it doesn't matter whether you're a pastor or a prophet or a teacher or an apostle or an evangelist or you're a, a bishop, whatever, or you're just a minister in the church or you're a prayer leader or anything. The Bible says, who shall abide in that tabernacle? All of us, children of God, whether you're leading the children church or you're a, a, a choir member or you're an usher or you are in prayer team or you are cleaning the church, you're a minister. If you're expressing out the gift the Lord has given to you in one or two capacities in the local congregation, you're a minister ministering. The Bible says then, who are those who should be ministering? Who are those who should be in that tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? We all come early so that we can start praying, so that we can set up things, so that we can visit. Oh, when you call home leadership meeting, you have some sets that come. Oh, you come, you know, pastor's meeting, you have those. These are that brethren that getting that title and pride ourselves in those things without really acting in that capacity. I think the days are, have come that it should no longer be. You can't be a leader and you're leading no one. You're a pastor, you're pastoring no one. You don't pray for them. You don't visit them. 
You don't even know what, you don't know their names in the church. But all it is all about is title. And once people now get on, some leaders, how do they get their pastors and their teachers and whatever, or their leaders, it's just by, you know, nominating people. Time has come that we stop nominating people into those things. Are they qualified to be in the tabernacle? Are they qualified to stand in Elohim's holy hill? You don't give people title because they're supporting the church, because they've been a long time in the church, or because you want to keep them, or because you think they occupy one position or the other in the society, and when they are their orders, or because they have big cars, or because you think they are huge, tall, short, big, small, whatever. You don't give people posts for carnal reasons. And if you're doing that, what are you doing? The Lord will not be there. And I pray that the Lord will touch everyone who is listening to this morning. And if you've accepted any position in the church and you know you are not qualified and you know that you were given this position because you are close to the pastor or because you are one of the financiers of the church or because you brought people in the church and if position is not given to you, you take them away. You're putting laws into your hands. Today, as you listen or you hear this message, prayerfully say, Lord, have mercy on me and that pastor that put you in that position. Because, brethren, it ought not to be so. Psalm 15, it says, He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart, he that backbited not with his tongue, nor doeth evil with to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contained, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. Did you see that? He that feareth sweareth to his own heart. And change it not. A lot of people, especially, you know, sorry, I'm not trying to, you know, profile or anything. But in some background, children are so important to every marriage that when they get married and then, you know, to some culture and they don't get a child, problem will start. And then it will be the man will start looking out to go and get the second wife. And the wife will start looking out to see if they can, you know, get child and all that. And then infidelity will come in. And before you know it, polygamy comes in and it's some in secret, some you don't know, but you swore to your own heart on the wedding day. And you said for better and for worse in death and in life, in everything, just because the children are not coming. And that is why the marriage is breaking. He that swore to his own heart, he said, Lord, I'm going to serve you and I'm with all my heart. Just because wife is not coming, husband is not coming, you backslide. You do it your own way, brethren. It ought not to be so. Just because one year, two, three, the job has not come the, 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 of your choice and how you wanted it, you're backsliding. Why? And before, you know, one thing or the other. Or because you have stayed, the car of your choice had not come. And that's where you're going. The Bible says, he that swore it to his own heart. Elizabeth and then Zechariah were there, well stricken in age. There was no child, yet they were in the tabernacle. They were serving the Lord. They walked uprightly in his presence that he found them faithful. He found them faithful. If there were people like that, don't think that it's all. There were, there were priests like Ananias the high priest who was the chief that took Yeshua Hamashiach to the cross. There were the scribes and Pharisees and all of them that were, and the scribes that were sitting in the tabernacle, yet their own lives were rotten, were nothing. It was of greed that even when Yeshua came himself, he kept condemning them. You're going to ask yourself, what kind of a priest am I in the tabernacle of the Most High? Am I going to be like Zechariah, who is upright before the Lord, who walked righteously before him? Or am I going to be like Ananias, who was still a high priest in that time? Who was still a priest in that time that took over? And what are we getting today in our churches, in our ministries? And unbelievers are looking up to the church to see the example. They are there out there looking for hope. Looking for who will deliver them. Looking for the blessedness in the gospel. Looking for the peace that comes in the, in the scriptures. Looking for that grace that is abounds in the life of believers. And when they look in, they see nothing. 
from the very first person. Next week, we're going to talk about John the Baptist. And I want everybody to be ready. Invite as much as you can in next weekend. As we look into this, your eyes will be opened. It will be something you're going to say, wow. And then you will know. If all these people that say they're evangelists, are they really one? Are they really one? Those who want to become one, then by the grace of God, you will see all it takes and their lives and what the Lord uses. But brethren here, the Bible says there, they, he that put it not out his money to usury, nor take it reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Amen. And they walked uprightly, righteously. That's why they were not moved. Child or no child, they were not moved. Do you not want to be moved in life? Do you not want to be shaken by the temperatures and the tempest and the, and the changing climate of the society we are in? The Bible says, he that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. The truth in your heart. You can't come and you're saying something outside and the inside is going. And not even only that, you know, at IMF meeting yesterday, um, and, and, and our beloved minister Jackie, when it was her time to speak, she brought out some mask and some things that were written. So they put up that mask and they were reading some really emotional, you know, shattering things. So people come to church with mask because they can't speak out. Because they don't want to be judged. Because they don't want to be seen as not being there. Because all these prophets have come with all this hyper grace and all this prosperity. And then people now have the wrong emotion that you don't need to go through things. If you go through things, it means you're a sinner. It means God is not answering you. And because of that, they jump away out from where they will get the word to go to all these quick fix. To where they will fix, they will be fixed temporarily and they come back and people are walking around in the church in mask that's one side of it and the other is hypocrisy when people are out there preaching the gospel and doing things but they've not dealt with their own life personally the bible says that he that backbited not with his tongue you talk too much in the tongue Ch -ch 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 -ch, talking about you can't help yourself speaking evil you can't help yourself Tattling in the church, tell bearing in the church. You can't help yourself talking about the past, all that leaders, everything. Nobody tells you anything because the next minute is out. Even when things are talking, today you will ask the Lord for deliverance. Nor do it evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor. He in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. You don't just mingle with anyone. You know, there's something we say, tell me who is your friend. Show me who, is, who is your friend and I'll tell you who you are. The Bible says, evil communication corrupts good manners. Be ye separate from among them. So you can't be doing all those things in the office and in the church you become holy. You can't be out there. You are a Christian, but you're having a relationship with an unbeliever and you're coming to the church. Your eyes is there and you're coming to the church. No, he says a vile person is content. He that honoreth them that fear the Lord. Amen. Do you honor those that fear the Lord? Do you respect them? Or do you look down on them? Do you speak down on them because they are not one of the Joneses? Say he that honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart. Brethren, that's what the Bible says there. And let's see in Acts, the same Psalm, chapter 24. See he that, from verse 3, the Bible says, Psalm 24, 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his place? He that had clean hands and pure heart. You know, we left the message of the pure heart. I want to thank the Lord. It's almost 2 point something K. Now, still keep spreading it. We just need that purity. The church needs to hear it. Every believer need it. Every child of God need it. Every people out there need it. That is that condition if we want to see him. If we want to stand before him. If we want to be used by him. The Bible says, He that had clean hands and a pure heart. He had not, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity. You've not lifted up your soul unto vanity. Then our Lord Yeshua made it clear. 
You can't serve God and serve mammon. No way. You can serve two masters. It's either you're obedient unto one and unfaithful unto the other. You can't mix the two. But what do we see today? People trying to mix the old wine and put it into a new wine skin. The Bible says that the vessel will break. And that's why you get a lot of broken vessels. A lot of people in the church, they can't put themselves together because they are trying to combine the old and the new. The Bible says that even the old rent, the old cloth will pull the new one and the rent will be so much. He says, who that lifted not up his soul to vanity. You can't serve the Lord in consecration, in commitment. You know, as I said it again, go back again to the fundamental seas again, to listen to them. And in that message, and the Lord will bless you as he spread it. If you lift your soul to vanity, anything goes for you. Every car that comes goes for you. Every house that comes goes for you. Every dress, every shoe, every tie, every suit, every whatever goes for you. And to you, you see the ministry as all those things to accrue vanity unto yourself. Brethren, do we read our Bible to see what happened to Solomon when he decided to go into vanity? And how many people with thousands of people in their churches have gone into vanity? And what do you see? You come into a church, you don't even know what you're seeing. It is just, the, the Lord is looking and looking and he's coming again. He's coming again. Coming again. Various vessels. He's been showing. He's been showing. To every one of us that he is coming again, brethren. And this says that lifted not unto his soul unto vanity. Let's leave the world alone. Let's let let's leave it to go. It had it 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 is got its own course to follow. We have our own course to channel ourselves through. Our course is different, it's very different. No sworn deceitfully, no swear deceitfully. You can't do it, you can't do it. Don't raise your hand and say, I will do it. And at the end of the day, you don't do it. The Lord even used it in one of the parables. He says, there were two sons. A man had two sons. One said to his dad, "When I will do it. And at the end, he didn't do it. And the other one says, I will not do it. But at the end, he did it. Which one is the real son? So when you are in the church, you've taken up position to be an evangelist, to be older. The church will relax. Because that is in your hand. You've taken up the position to visit everybody. At the end of the day, you don't visit them. You've taken up the position to be a teacher. How many people have you taught? Have you called? Have you described? You are at work 24-7. By the time you come, you're tired. And then you come to church to do some little drama in that few hours. But throughout the week, nobody hears about you. Nobody knows what you are doing. Do not swan deceitfully. You know, we do things we don't know we are doing them. You take up things to do. You don't do. Why not say, I don't have the time. Why don't you step down from that position so that someone else can take it? You know, it says, it's like the scribes and Pharisees. They sit right there at the door. They don't let people come in. They don't let people go out. They occupy positions. So when that position will be given to someone else who could do it, but they say, oh, but pastor this has it. Minister this had that. But you are not doing it. Who not sworn deceitfully, not only that in the church, at work. Example is Ananias and Sapphira. Did you sell all this with this? Yes, we did. But did they? No. Because they want to do what others are doing in the church, but they cannot do it. Sworn deceitfully. In so many ways, we can keep just describing and describing. The Bible says in verse 5 of Psalm 24, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. That is the person the Lord will use. He that will not sworn deceitfully, will not give up his soul to vanity. 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 There are nothing that can build you up. Vanity eats up the spiritual man, brethren, whether you like it or not. You know, some people say, oh, do you mean to tell me that these people that look like this, they're going to hell? Don't ask me anything. On the last day, we will know. We will see. Vanity eats up spirituality. Vanity eats up your power. Vanity eats up grace. Vanity eats up anointing. Vanity is a canker, brethren. The, more, the way you're doing it and you're accepting it, it makes, you know what vanity is for those who are ch children of God. You're living in stubbornness. You know it's wrong. 
You know you shouldn't. And the time you were using doing all these things, you are using it in what? Adoring and then worshipping vanity. They are all vanity. Vanity, brethren. May the Lord help us to put vanity in his place in the name of Yeshua. That none of us will be given to this. Let's go back again to the book of Luke. Chapter 1. Back to um, Zechariah and um, Elizabeth to see what the Bible told us about them. So the Bible says that they were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Hallelujah. Blameless. Someone may say, wow, that's a tall order. If Zechariah can do it, the Bible says that Elijah is a man of like passion, like you and I. If they can't do it, you can do it. I can do it. If we want the Lord to use us today, if we know a lot of, where do we have 1,010 and 20 churches around? That's fine. We like it. Instead of having drinking beer palace and drinking palace and pops around and all those things and people are, I prefer we have church in every door, on every door. That is fine for me. But before you can go, have the Lord really called you? The Bible says they were walking before him blameless. So you that want to start up a church very quickly, why are you going? If your motive, if, if your motive is wrong, if it's about money, if it's about to command authority, it's about pride, it's about to get people and the grandiosity and then, you know, it, it being considered, uh, you know, and in arrogance, you failed automatically from the foundation. It's not about Yeshua, Jesus. It's not about him. And you're there, you're a young person, you're leading a congregation, but you look round. How many girls in the church are after you? You dress up and dress, you, you have only got one wife. Why don't you keep the souls of these young ladies in the church who are not yet married? If you put your eyes on you, you've led them to hell. Because you can't come for them. Why would you do it? Not to talk of going outside after these ones. You can't do it. You're dressing up, you know, to kill and you're going to church and you're married. Why would you do it? It can only be for your husband. If you try and get those people out there into sin with you, have you done anything good? You have not. If you come into the church and you're not showing the younger one's example of how young children should dress and you're married, you're elderly. Yes, you can escape it because nobody comes after you. What of these young people who are facing big trials and out there all sorts of flies flying out there? You're exposing them. Brethren, can we look after our congregations? Can we look after the church? And you're walking. What job do you do? And you're there 24-7. What are you telling your children that don't mind about things of the Lord? This is the way to go about it. You are telling the young people, don't mind about, this is the way to go about it. Brethren, let's ask the Lord. It's not by power nor by might, but if we ask him, he will. He's wonderful. His grace is sufficient for all of us to pray this morning and say, Lord, help me to be blameless before you. If this is the qualification of the person you use, Lord, I want to be there. He's faithful and just, brethren. He is a compassionate father, brethren. His loving kindness, his tender mercies are new every morning. He stretches onto the uttermost part of the world. Brethren, they are new every morning. We swim in it. We swallow his grace to keep us, uh, uh, to keep us blameless is there. Remember what the Bible says. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. We be filled in him to hunger. He will fill you. He's a wonderful father. He's Elohim. Remember what he says. It's not his will that any man should perish. And our Yeshua Jesus looked up and says, The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the God of harvest. Let's pray that he will bring harvest to get sent down laborers. So he's still in the process of making and producing laborers. Only if we yield ourselves. He will touch our hearts. He will make us blameless. Only if we surrender. Only if we say, here am I, Lord. Use me. 
take me. He will brought, bring us to the point he brought Zechariah and Elizabeth. Verse 7, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were both well stricken, now well stricken in years. They had no child. I don't know what the situation is there before you. There's their own circumstances that they have no child. There was no child standing between them. Don't you have this? You don't have that? And people are coming to you. Oh, you don't have that? Don't let anyone talk you out of the grace of Elohim. All those things. By brethren, remember that in heaven, there's nothing like husband and wife. There's nothing like children and this. We are all going to stand before him in his presence. When you have a child, the Lord only use you to bring that person out to the world. Just as our parents brought us out. The question is not the child that was brought out. The question is the fulfillment of that destiny. How and where? You've been brought out. Fulfill your destiny. And even if you don't have a physical child, there are so many spiritual children. There are so many children out there that the Lord is using you. So let's stop using excuses. Not to serve God. Oh, sister, how are you doing? Oh, you know, I don't have a husband. He's weighing me down. Brother, how are you doing? Oh, I've not bought a house. And that's what is weighing me down. Look at these two people who stood before the Lord, well stricken in years, and they still have something. No child. And you know what children means in the, cult, in the Hebraic culture, where they have 12 13 children by one lady only. You know what it means. And here they are standing in the presence of the Lord. So does it mean that God doesn't love Zechariah and Elizabeth? He made them to become their pastors and their priests and yet they don't have. You know these days people are like to prove that God is with you and you are powerful. Some people hide they are sick. Some people hide they don't have a child. Some people, oh, you because I don't have these. I'm not able because I'm not married. And they are telling me that I can't be in ministry because I'm single. Who told you that, brethren? That's a lie from the pit of hell. That you're not married. They, who said that? What can what, Does it mean that it takes a man for a woman to fulfill her destiny? No way. Brethren, I don't know what is standing before you now. And the enemy tries to use that to stop you in ministry. Today, you are going to stand from today and says, no more. Look at these people. They had no child. It may be money. It may be sickness. You said, oh, I'm so sick. I can't go. Who told you? You can talk. The Lord will heal you. You can say, oh, I don't have legs. Oh, let those who have got their legs go and evangelize. You have got hands. Brethren, today, may the Lord open our eyes to remove every obstacle that will be standing before us in the name of Yeshua. Amen. The Bible says, and Elizabeth was barren. Maybe you're being told you're barren, you're crying, going from one church to the other, traveling from one place to the other, and they're calling you barren. Remember what the Bible says, that she that was barren in the book, in the book of 1 Samuel had what? Seven. Seven. I want to, had I had not, but continued in prayer. And I want to tell you, and the Bible says, and they were now well stricken in years. There may be a natural barrier to you. I don't know what your natural barrier is. That may be age. It says, oh, I'm now 60. Who will marry me? Ah, ah, ah. Even if they marry me, mm -hmm. will I get a child? Menopause had come. Oh, you are going to say, oh, my face, I've got acid on my face. And look, is disfigured. No man can marry me again. No woman can marry me. Oh, I don't have one hand. Oh, I don't have left hand. Oh, I'm crippled. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have that. Oh, I have that. I don't know what is the natural limitation posing like a Goliath before you. I want to tell you that with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. That's what he said to um, to, to to Mary when we read down the same um, chapter. With God, all things are possible. Elohim created. He knows your situation. He knows where you are. He wants to use you as a showpiece. He wants to showcase. Why are miracles not happening? Brethren, we have not been giving our Elohim chance to use us to perform the miracles. We just want it now, 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 here and there. But do you know what miracle it will be? That a lady at 60 got married and have a child. The internet, it will be all over the place. Everyone will come to that church to come and see this baby with their own eyes. Everybody will travel. Brethren, there are things that makes people to come to the Lord. 
and you can see someone who is just there with no legs crippled doing express for the Lord. The evangelist in Australia who had no half. You can see how many millions of people go to visit and reach. Brethren, let's allow the Lord to use us. Let's stop being, you know, what we think we can. Anyhow you are, he knows. Any way you are, you are beautifully and wonderfully made for a purpose. That he had allowed them not to have a child. And Elizabeth is called barren because she said it later in the verses. She said, she that was called barren and now is pregnant. She hid herself. That's one of the things we are going to say. And the Bible, another thing we're going to pick out from there because of our time running is that, and when Zechariah saw he was troubled, time will fail us to continue. It's such a beautiful thing to learn. And next weekend, we want to start John the Baptist. We will see if we can. Hold on with us. Don't go off. Let this, just put it, this CD in one place, this um, this book, um, podcast, because we are going to continue during the week to learn more and more and more. Stay in tune. Share all the messages from tomorrow as these truths are coming on, brethren. Let's make sure that we spread the good news. Next Saturday, we are going to round up which is Zechariah, and then briefly look at Joseph, and then we will continue. So, brethren, what we are going to pray now is, praise the Lord, amen. amen. So, we are going to pray now for all women in our prayer. We want to thank the Lord for every lady in the United States. Today is there all women. Okay, worldwide, yes, the United Kingdom have had their mother's <laughs> um, celebration. And then, but today, on behalf, I know our brethren in the U.S., you wouldn't mind for us to pray for everyone. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for opening our eyes to those that you use. We are going to go home, stay back, pray in our closet, in our different churches, in our ministries, individually, to say, Lord, use us. Bring us to the point where Zechariah and Elizabeth are, that the testimony of the Bible concerning them, about them, of them, will be mine in the name of Yeshua. And Lord, we also pray for every lady, every woman, every priest of yours. Father, because we're all one in you, we are all yours in woman body. Father, we pray anywhere we are, Heavenly Father, that you would have mercy on, on these, Father, that you have given to us, every woman. Lord, you know what we go through from child, but from when we were born, Father, taking up responsibilities, facing all sorts of, you know, trials in the world. A lot of women are vulnerable and from there, some not well looked after. And it, when it starts, it dawns on women. Some have children at the age of 13, some 14. By the time they are 20, their lives are all shattered. Father, you know what the society has put on women that you have not put on us. And some today are suffering, are going through the dilemma in such, oh Lord. We ask that you will deliver the race. We ask that you will deliver every woman. Heavenly Father, thank you because there is much grace in women. The grace to endure, the grace to carry on, the grace to support, the grace to think wise, the strength, oh Lord, to raise and to, you know, to be pillars. Father, I pray that every lady, not just those in the United States, but from everywhere, that the woman race will rise up again to see the plan and purpose of the Lord. And Father, anyway, the enemy had downed it on women to put them down, to make them vulnerable in terms of rape, in terms of, you know, you know, men cheating on them, bringing them down, beating them, domestic violence and all that. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will take this away. And for every woman going through such emotional and psychological trauma of divorce, of, you know, being battered, violence, Oh, Lord, or even in war-torn areas, Father, they are being raped, or they don't know where their children are, or they're raising up. Father, we pray you have mercy and deliver, oh, Lord. 
touch every woman touch every woman open our eyes lord that you created us to decorate the world you created us to give a huge meaning to this world you created us heavenly father to stand strong father lord and to direct lord the way things should be do to organize heavenly father we pray may our eyes be opened i pray for every woman on earth who is not born again who have not known you Father, may this gospel spread to every one of them. That Satan will stop using women as object of Satanism. Heavenly Father, we debar Satan from today in the name of Yeshua. Lord, he will not exploit that vulnerability in the name of Yeshua. Father, we pray, O oh God, for every woman who is sick. Lord, heal them. For every woman who is out there, Lord, and thank you also for those you raised in the sphere of society. Thank you for those you've given a voice. Thank you for those you're using in the capacity of prime ministers, in the capacity of looking after their nations. Father, we ask you give them wisdom. We ask that you encourage them. We ask that they will stand using the special grace you've given to every woman, Lord, so that they will utilize it in full capacity to direct the nations in the name of Yeshua. Those of them who are there in different professions, leading and they're leading in their professions, give them the grace, give them the power to stand for you. And that's why we're asking that your grace, that your knowledge will fill their heart in the name of Jesus. And Father, we bind every spirit of occultism and satanism, which the enemy wants to use the woman body to do. Father, today we debar the enemy in the name of Jesus. For those women who are now, who's lost, their, who, are, who are widows, they are crying in pain, no food to eat, they are wallowing, they are watching their children die in war-torn areas. Father, we pray, oh Lord, the God of all comfort, Father, that you would deliver in the name of Yeshua. Lord, for those who are crying and saying, oh, I should have been like this. Oh, women are fulfilled when they get married. Father, I pray that they will know that you are their husbands in the name of Jesus. For women who are sick in hospital, Father, Lord, and they're crying and they're saying, oh, this disease is peculiar with women. Father, we are praying to today that such oh lord they will be healed and there will not be anything peculiar with women anymore in the name of yeshua amen father we thank you for every woman all around the whole world using those in the united states as a point of contact father that your blessings your peace will rain on everyone yes. this morning in yeshua jesus name we pray amen, amen. and amen